Tell me when you're recording. I'm recording. You're recording. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Pete, uh, and I'm here with my trusty cameraman, Dalton. Um, he's one of my students. He apparently has shaky hands, so if it's all shaky, blame him, not me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm going to show you guys how to repair, uh, do a simple pin repair on a um, VEX 363 two-wire motor. Um, pretty common problem with these motors is, is that the pins uh, break off and uh, then you've got a pretty useless motor. Um, it's actually a fairly frustrating part of the design, but, you know, it is what it is. So to do the repair, um, you're going to need a couple of things beforehand, a couple of common hand tools like wire cutters, needle nose pliers are useful, having some kind of a sharp knife um, to be able to strip wires with is useful. Um, I introduce a little uh, super glue into my technique, it makes things a little bit easier. Uh, the other things that you'll need which are more specialized are um, a set of crimpers, uh, cheap crimpers are uh, a pain to use, um, but good crimpers cost you about 20 bucks. Um, these are made by Iwis, and they are, they've got three sizes on there. I will try to put a link to these tools, as well as the connector body and the pins themselves in the um, Description. In the description, yes, thank you. Below. Below. Thank you. I'm a pro, so bear with me. Anyway, so first thing you want to do is you want to um, you want to inspect the wire. Um, probably the most important thing to do is you want to make sure that there's no break here at the stress relief. Um, that's actually a pretty common uh, way for these motors to fail. Um, if you if this stress reliever is uh, not intact and if you see the copper of wires um, that means that you're going to need to do a full wire replacement which I will do in another video later but you want to inspect the rest of the wire make sure that it is intact it's not broken um, you know if, if your wire got caught between a couple of gears and it's kind of got the zipper look to it you probably want to replace the wire because it's going to be compromised at some point um, this wire looks good. The only problem really is the pins, so we're just going to replace the pins. Um, I start by cutting off the existing connector. Um, it is the blue keyed connector. You can keep it if you want um, and reuse the blue plastic. Um, I'm not going to do that for now because it's a little fiddly sometimes. Um, so you've got your two ends of the wire. I want to strip the end of that. What I do for that is I'll take my knife, I'll take like, uh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch down. I'll just score the insulation and then you bend it so you'll see the break in the insulation. And you can literally just pull it off with your thumbnail, okay? Once you've got these wires free, you want to twist them. Okay, so that they're all together so you don't get any stray wires that could cause any problems later on. All right, next, I'm going to take a couple of these pins. So you can just slice them off. Like I bought a pack of, I think, 200 of them. You can just snip them off with a pair of scissors. They're, I don't know, probably aluminum. Um, just snip them off right at the strip. There we go. Okay, so I need two of these. And then what I do after I put on my old man glasses is I'll take a little dab of super glue and I'll put a little dab of super glue right there in between the tongs, the prongs that hold the uh, wire insulation. Okay, so I just squeeze until I get a little drib. And then you take the wire. The wire actually goes, and these things are tiny. Uh, you're, you're not going to be able to see this in a YouTube video. But um, there is actually, when they manufacture these pins, there is actually like a folded over socket kind of joint for 
the wire to go into. Make sure you have a good electrical connection. So I put it into that, and then I take my crimpers. I'm gonna use the smallest end of the crimper right here. I wanna put it straight up, okay, and crimp it. And there I have what I would call a pretty good connection. Okay, I'm gonna go in and do the other one. We'll dab a super glue just to hold it in there. Okay. Don't glue these to your fingers. It'd be really awkward. Okay, again, you're pushing the wire underneath that little socket. Okay. And once it's in there, again, let me try to get a little bit better view. I've got it so where the connector, eh, see? These things are a little fiddly. That's why I try to use the super glue. It does help. Okay. Got the connector going straight up. Put it in there. Crimp it down. And there, I've got a good crimp. Okay, next I'm going to take one of the housings. Housings that I have here actually have an arrow. You really can't see it, but they have an arrow on one socket. I usually put the black in there. I try to be consistent. Put one in, put the other in. Usually take a pair of needle nose pliers. Just kind of pull the pins real gently. You don't want to yank them because then you'll break off the pins and you're going to be doing this all over again. Okay. And there we go. We have a repinned VEX 393 motor that will work absolutely fine.